Okay, so mutualism. Mutualism is just a, a kind of association in which um, the two symbionts benefit from each other. But the only key word that you must take note of when you're talking about mutualism is that it is obligatory. Mutualism is obligatory. It's not a positive kind of association. What do I mean by obligatory association? It means that the two organisms really need themselves for survival. They understand they need themselves for survival. All like proto-corporation. Proto-corporation is facultative. It's a facultative as in which the two symbiotes benefit from each other. You understand? So what I have in point here is that mutualism is an association uh, that is of benefit to both symbionts. This process is an obligation process, unlike the corporation that is a facultative process, meaning that the I mean, good corporation is actually doing that themselves. So, examples of such um, association can be seen in um, the relationship between Escherichia coli and the intestinal bacteria of Escherichia coli found in humans. And, uh, and humans, we already said that, so we're having a relationship between Escherichia coli and humans. Now, the basic thing there is that the extra recycle life derives nutrients. You understand? It derives nutrients and shelter from big humans. On the other hand, what do we benefit since the mutualistic association? Is the fact that this bacteria has the ability to synthesize vitamins or produce vitamins for us. Enables us to utilize our vitamin. And what particular vitamin are we talking about? Vitamin K. You understand? It enables us to produce vitamin K. And this vitamin K is a very, very important um, mineral or a very, very important vitamin per se because it's in blood protein. It's one of the eating producing protein factors. You understand? So that's the work of that. Then another association where you find my. Um, um, in which a mutualistic kind of uh, interaction between organisms is that of termites. Is that of termites. You understand? Now, um, termites, per se, um, they have the inability to digest um, wood by themselves. You understand? They have the inability to digest wood by themselves. So they are certain kinds of protozoans, they are majorly flagellated protozoans that used to aid in the digestion of the wood that is eaten by the termites. You understand? While on the other hand, the termites provide shelter for those flagellated protozoans. And what are the examples of that flagellated protozoans? We have the Oxymonagida and we also have the Parabasalia. So the Oxymonagida and the Parabasalia are two major flagellated protozoans that aid in the digestion of wood ingested by termites. Come again. Oxymonadida and Parabasalia. Those two organisms in the digestion of wood. But the termite, right? The termite in turn supplies shelter for these organisms. Then another basic point we'll cover that one is your liking. As you see here, the liking. In fact, the lichen is an establishment between an uh, between an algae and the fungi. You understand? So from the from the lichen and the benefits mutualistically from each other. So that's that for that. Then we have parasitism. And what's parasitism? Parasitism is simply an association in which one symbiont called the parasite lives at the expense or detriment of another symbiont called the host. And there are two types. You have the smart the parasite, and you also have the dumb parasite. That sounds very lame. But when you know smart parasite, those parasites, they do not kill their host. They continue to derive their nutrients from their host. Just that that process of the derivation of nutrients from their host is detrimental to the host. Why the dumb ones are the ones that end up killing their house. And sometimes, in the process of killing their house, they themselves are also affected. Like the viruses. Viruses, the moment they infect the particular host and they kill.
few views eventually they become non -living. So it's a very young kind of pattern. So you find that common in your African um, um, sleeping sickness, in the standard that's called the human being by trypanosoma gabiens. This trypanosoma gabiens infects human as their host, and you get what I'm saying now, and uh, it causes that African sleeping sickness. So that's so that the pacific association. Then we have synergism. In synergism, two microorganisms of different species actually come together collectively to pull a particular effect which could be a disease, to cause a disease in another organism. I get what I'm saying now. We are having the collective um, effect or the collective contribution of three different parts and um, three different microorganisms which cause disease in humans or other uh, animals. Now this is what we want to do away. You see, these three uh, microbes, but that these two or three microbes, they are not specifically have to three, can two or three. So these two or three microbes cannot independently cause this particular disease. So they can only cause that disease when they collectively work together. I get it now. That's what happened. God has said. It's an association in which two microorganisms or symbionts collectively team up to produce a disease that could neither be caused singularly by themselves. So the disease is referred to a synergistic power infection. And you see that condition in a um, certain kind of um, a disease like your oral trush in the sand. It's also called the trash of the mouth which is also referred to as the Vincent disease. The Vincent disease. Then medically, we call this disease the gingivitis. We call it the gingivitis, which is the ulcerative gingivitis. You understand? So it's caused by the cooperation of three major um, parasites or microbes. And what are they? We have the Fusobacterium, we have the actinomyces, we have the Probotella species, and sometimes alongside the spirochetes. So you have the Fusobacterium, you have the actinomyces, you have the Probotella, and you also have the spirochetes. They come together to cause this N U and A N U G. You understand? The A N U G, which is the acute necrotizing or serrative gingivitis. The acute Necrotizing or serrated devices, also called the Vincent disease or the oral mouth trench. You see that now? So these organisms independently could not cause this disease. They have to collectively work together to cause the disease. Another example where you see a synergistic infection is in a disease called the bacterial vaginosis. Now, this bacterial vaginosis is caused by the collective impact of two microorganisms known as the mobilonchus species and the cardenerala, which is a, a vaginalis kind of infection. So they call it the cardenerala vaginalis. The cardenerala vaginalis. So the cardenerala vaginalis, which is a microorganism, will work hand in hand with the mobilonchus species to cause the um, Vaginal and vaginal and vaginosis disease. You understand? So these two microbes here, the mobilonchus species and the Adenarella vaginalis, will work together synergistically to cause this bacterial vaginosis. Alright, so those are very, very, very interesting examples of synergistic infection. So you have other kind of association like predation and competition. In predation, one organism causes the predator actually feeds directly on another organism called the prey. And you find that in bacteriophage. Sometimes the bacteriophage, uh, which is a kind of virus that feeds on bacteria, actually phagocytes or feed cause um, detrimental impact on bacteria. And that is the result of their large size. Example of such kind of large size viruses that are actually capable of feeding on bacteria, smaller size of bacteria are the um, 
um, the Severicom and the Selenus viruses. Okay, why competition is just struggle for survival, and this struggle exists as a result of the limited amount of necessary resources needed by all reasons. You understand? So they come into competition just for the sole purpose of survival, and that's what we have here. And competition can be interspecific or intraspecific. And when you hear the word interspecific competition, we are talking about uh, we are talking about interspecific, we are talking about competition between organisms of different species. Different species, but intraspecific competition between organisms of the same species. Alright. So that's that for that. Another thing is still about the infectious diseases. So I have here that infectious diseases are actually disorders which are caused by microorganisms or parasites and are capable of being passed from one person to another. There is another one called an infectious disease. They are caused by microorganisms and have the capacity of being transmitted from one organism to another. I get what I'm saying now. So this transmission could occur either directly or indirectly. That's directly from the positive organism or the pass to another person and that pass it to another person that's indirectly. In the sample, it's the same parasite. That's where you must take note of. So the agent of um, infection, those things that are capable of causing infections are what we call pathogens. And they breed microbes and can also be called germs. So the major um, um, pathogens that we have are usually uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi, and some other nematodes and stuff like that. So the transmission of infectious diseases is actually dependent or referring to the roots. It's majorly dependent on the roots of exposure to that pathogen or that infectious agent. You understand? So we have different roots for exposure to pathogens or infectious diseases and agents such as skin, nose, inner eyes, ears, mouth, and genitalia, which are due to the reproductive system. So those places have openings that are suitable enough for the penetration of these microbes into the human body. So assignments here that we have, you should actually read up on food spoilage and write and read up on control of microbial activities. So that is an assignment. So now we come to immunity, which is the last part of the syllabus. I'm very interested. Immunity simply means the, your, the ability of your body to produce defense against foreign bodies. The ability to be non-susceptible or to be able to fight against foreign bodies. That's what body means. So that the immunity is the ability of the person to be able to gain resistance or show defense against in particular foreign bodies, you understand, which we can call antigens. And this is done by the activation of that person immune system. So the immune system is a collection of all factors that are able to defend you against microbes or antigens, foreign bodies. You understand? And there are two types. We have the innate immune system and we have the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system are actually the first and second line of defense. You understand? Because they are divided into the external innate immune system and the internal innate immune system. But before I talk about that, in innate immune system just looks like uh, you have a big organization and the front gates you have um, security in the top. So that security, anybody coming into that organization will definitely pass through that security. So it is the security that has the work of stopping people who can be of threat to that organization. You understand? So those are like the first line of defense. And you are doing it. Yeah, that, mm. This uh, first line of defense men, organisms or cells or agents will actually come across large amounts, large amounts of, uh, of antigens and foreign bodies. You understand? And for that reason, they will lack immunological memory. Then that they will not be able to remember all types of foreign body that get or try to get into that human body. Okay. So that's why we have noted that in this system they lack the logical memory that they can't remember those foreign bodies particularly and they are non-specific. Meaning that 
they will actually try to stop all kinds of foreign bodies. You get, they are non specific. And we said that violence is the first line of defense with an external house, and the second line of defense with an external house. The external house are made up of uh, the skin, as you can see, anything that tries to get into me right now, because of what comes across my skin. So the skin, and anyone that tries to pass my nose, come across the new first membrane, that's number two. And lastly, we have secretions. You understand? We have some kind of secretion in your stomach, pH secretion. You understand? That tries to stop uh, invading foreign bodies from getting into the systemic circulation. You get it? Then, your internal house are made up of natural killer cells, tumor necrotic factors, cytokines, which are. Uh, which includes interferons and uh, talikins, which I've explained already um, in uh, previous lectures. You get it? And we said the monocytes are usually the ones that used to grow and move to different parts of the body, later on specify in that region and groups become macrophages. You understand? And so those macrophages, they are limited to their particular site of action. You get Why the natural killer cells, when um, and a particular invading foreign bodies or antigen comes into the body, they kill those cells. I guess now they are able to detect those cells with the aid of cells, something we call the MHC. I get the major histocompatibility um, complex. So this major histocompatibility complex is a pattern, I get you now, a pattern recognizing complex that tries to check, I get you now, or tries to serve as a symbol to recognize a normal cell. Uh, that is normal body cell and uh, normal cell. So when the normal amount of MEC in particular cell is abnormal, the natural killer cells begin to work. You understand? They secrete what we call chlorine, and those chlorines will incorporate that cell, which is the invading cell, and lead to the death of that cell. And they can also work by apoptosis. That is, they, uh, they stimulate uh, natural cell death in that organ. Alright, that's what we call and that's that's what externals and for the internal family. So we have the adaptive immune system, the adaptive immune system are those that are uh, the third line of defense. They have immunological memory, but they are specific. They do not just act on all kinds of uh, antibodies or uh, antigens. They are specific to a particular kind of antigen. And we have two major types, the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. Now we go to immunity. Which we defined already. Immunity, remember what we're talking about the type of immune system. Immunity, we defined it as the resistance of an organism to, or the ability of an organism or individual to be resistant to certain kind of foreign bodies or to be in antigens. And we have the active immunity and passive immunity. These are the types of immunity. Types of immunity is active immunity and passive immunity. Whenever something is active, it means that it is not, does not happen just by itself. It is not spontaneous. Something has to trigger it. Understand? So the active immunity simply refers to um, the body that is destroyed by the body mix and body that are adapted to inhibiting antigens after exposure. So you are exposed to a particular kind of um, um, foreign agent and your body begins to resistance to it. And there are two types. Active immunity are two types. We have the natural active immunity and the vaccine induced. The natural active immunity is, for example, uh, in, in individuals that are exposed, for example, to malaria. In Nigeria, here, you know, we have high incidence of malaria. We have been exposed to malaria for a long period of time, so our body gets used to the malaria and gives immunity to that malaria. And so that's an example of the active immunity, and that's that of the natural. So we were not just, uh, you understand, we were not, we did not produce, you understand, we did not produce those things, you understand, we did not, I'm sorry, we did not, we are not giving those antibodies, right? We are not giving those antibodies, instead we produce them due to frequent exposure. That's what we mean by the natural active ones. But vaccine induced, you understand, we were injected Vaccines, I guess now, which are the weaker forms of those of that particular antigen or foreign body. And so, so that upon exposure, um, there will be um, a recognition of that anti 
body which is the weak form that has been given and into our body is that that has not been able to identify as part of the zone and won't put any effect or threat to the individual. Then, in passive, in passive immunity, this kind of immunity may be present even before exposure. For example, now, a child that is born, I guess now, has already started getting immunity from his mom through the placenta. Understand? So those are the passive immunity. You do not produce those um, immune substances or those injects of immunity. Rather, you were given. Understand? That's passive. So, that will be the end of this class. And I believe you understand. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section and I'll attend to it. Feel free to check into PhD tutors so you can actually get better and advanced understanding of this concept because we actually explain them deeper in the classes. Alright then, thank you and stay tuned. If you've not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you get an onion notification so you can get inspired whenever we drop new videos here in PhD tutors. Thank you.